Because you guys demanded it after I uploaded my cover video, on today's lesson we're going to take a look at how to play Michael Ockerfeldt's awesome solo from Opeth's Window Pane. Hey there kids and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wing Shop here with your best buddy, Uncle Ben. A couple weeks ago I uploaded a video of me playing through the Window Pane solo by Opeth, which is one of my absolute favorites. It's off the Damnation record and it features a ton of beautiful bends and some really killer phrasing by old Michael. And I'm not doing a complete playthrough of it, that way I can hopefully dodge the copyright stuff and make a little bit of money on this video. Yay! But I assume if you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with this solo and know what it sounds like anyway, and you just want to learn the licks. And as always, tabs are available for this lesson over on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitars. Just search for hashtag Weekend Wank Shop 244. Find the tabs, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. And as always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and more are available to my true believers over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. Click the link in the video description, check out the page, and sign up today. It is a dark and stormy night here in East Tennessee, so you may hear the pitter-patter of raindrops or maybe some ominous thunder in the background or a, a very scared dog pacing around the room. So, bear with me. Quick word about the setup you're gonna need for this song. It is played with a capo on fret number two. All the live videos and stuff you'll watch, you'll notice they always have the capo here on two. Although, I have no reason to believe that Michael would have recorded the guitar solo with the capo on. That just kind of, to me, always messes with the feel and stuff, you know? It's like the tension and things feel kind of odd whenever you play with the capo on. But I figure if you're maybe playing this in a cover band or something like that, you're gonna have the capo on too anyway, so that's where I put it. In order to keep the confusion down, I am going to be referring to all the frets as their actual numbers. Usually whenever you're using a capo, it's like, this is no longer fret three, this is fret number one, and this is two, and this is three, and so on. But considering so much of the solo takes place, you know, a little bit higher up the neck, I'm just gonna call them what they actually are. You know, if it's played right here, it's gonna be fret number 12. If it's played right here, I'm gonna call that fret number three. So all my fret numbers and stuff and the fret numbers on the tab are going to be not relative to capo. So here's the first phrase. Let's take a look at this. I'm starting off here with the B on fret number 12. I'm gonna hit that note and give it a full step bend. Let it hold for a while and then apply a little bit of vibrato. I like how he doesn't just jump right in with the vibrato. He lets the note hang for a while and then puts a little shake on it. Now the phrase that follows that is like this. I'm playing that by playing the 12 on the B again with a whole step bend, 9th high E, 10th high E with a pull off back to 9, 12th B, back to 9 on the high E, and then you gotta play that 12th B with a whole step bend again. Okay, so now you have neutral 12, 10, and 9 all on the B string. So that lick is. Now the next phrase, what we're gonna do here is to start off on the nine on the B with a slight rake into it. 10, then back to nine with a little hammer on pull off with 10. Just like that. The timing is really particular on this whole solo. Then on the G play, 11, nine. And then on the D string here, what you're gonna do is to slide down quickly to the nine. So I kind of started 11-ish, but you don't really hear that starting note. You just kind of hear him end on that nine. Then the seven. And then go back to the nine and give it a little half step bend. And a pull off to seven. And then play the nine on the A. And then play the seven on the A, sliding to nine. That's how that phrase caps off. So this next phrase right here starts off with this chromatic line on the G. We're gonna play from the eight, with a little rake to seven to six, okay? Notice how that eight sticks out, then falls down the other two notes. Now you're gonna play the seven on the B, six G, play the B on nine, and then play the nine again with a half step bend. Okay, so it's... I almost played the wrong one there for a second. Okay. 
Now, basically, if he does that half step bend and he holds it for a little while, you will hear him let it straight back down onto its neutral ninth fret position. So there at the last second like that. Now following this, he does, I think it's like seven consecutive half step bends on that ninth fret B string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven in a row. And that's all off of one pick stroke two. It's not like he's going like that. Just pick it once and do seven consecutive half step bends letting it sustain, you know? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before we play this phrase. I love that phrase. Now what I'm doing here is I'm playing the B on seven, nine, and seven. Go up here to the G on seven, so you gotta kinda roll that finger up. Slide down to six on the G. Play the seven on the B. And then on the G here, you're gonna play six sliding to four. After this, you gotta play that six on the G with a half step bend. And after that, what you're gonna do is just slide it down to the four. Again, with capo on, you kinda bonk into it a little bit, but there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we play this. So this is the four on the G pulling off to two, or your capo position, you know? Then what you're gonna do is to play that four and slide it to six. Then we have this phrase. So this is me sliding into that six on the G, five B, seven B, and sliding down quickly onto that fourth G. Just like that. Then we have this. This is a little rake into the open G string, or second fret G, as I should be calling it. Then play the four. And then you're gonna play the six on the D. Okay? This leads you to the last phrase of the solo. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing that D on a six with a little hammer on pull off to seven. Ninth A, back to six on the D. Okay? Then the seven sliding to nine, and then pick the nine, okay? And then lastly, on the low E string here, you're gonna play seven, eight, nine. Just like that little chromatic run. Seven, eight, nine. And that last note, he just kind of holds out and sustains, and it sounds like there's some overdubs of some other notes feeding back on top of it as it goes back into the verse. Sounds really cool. So your entire solo will start off with those sexy bends here in the ninth position. thing on the G. Consecutive bends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bluesy thing. And that is it. The things to really pay attention to while you play this solo are getting those bends super, super in tune. One thing I recommend everybody do whenever you're learning how to do bends like this and really trying to get them in tune, practice this stuff with an electronic tuner on your headstock, you know? If you have like one of those clip-on snark tuners or, you know, Diodario and TC make them, put that on the, on the headstock right there and practice doing bends while you watch that tuner, you know, just trying to get that needle straight in the middle and get your bend super in tune, whether you're doing a whole step or a half step bend like you do in this solo. Get those things in tune and pay really close attention to where he throws that vibrato on, you know? It's not one of those things that he's constantly applying to every single note. It's really subtle and it matches the song perfectly. So be sure to listen really closely to the original and try to time your vibrato where he puts his down. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to let me know in the comments below what other Opeth songs or riffs or solos or whatever you guys would like to see broken down on future installments of Weekend Wank Shop. They have such a unique style and approach to their riffs and everything and their solos that 
I would love to break down some more for you guys. You all can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And if you like what you see here on my channel and want to say thanks and show some support, be sure to check out that Patreon page at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. All kinds of downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and more cool stuff waiting for you over there. Well, it's been fun as always, but it's time to get away from the computer and go play some dang grit tar. Less clicking, more picking.